Dear colleagues, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to be invited for this section because I started, when I started to be prepared for the presentation, I thought that I would uh, uh, cover all the methods for such patients would get a chance for longer survival. But in the process of preparing for this session, I had to reconsider many conclusions. Rather, what's not to be done in peritoneal carcinoma of colorectal cancer, what we should do, all the do's and don'ts, uh, actual metastasis, uh, uh, bad uh, uh, prognosis, metastasis, uh, uh, maybe there will be chance for uh, cure. Uh, that was going from one study to another. But uh, let's uh, discuss it case by case. How frequently we encounter peritoneal uh, colorectal uh, cancer. This is the CART uh, database randomized study of first line of therapy of colorectal uh, cancer. Uh, individual data on the patients, more than 10,000 patients. The frequency uh, of prevalence is uh, not high. Only 11.2 percent of patients have got this lesion in peritoneum. And there are other localization, peritoneal localizations for metastasis. And only 2 percent, uh, actually, uh, they are only, uh, only lesions in the peritoneum. So very mean. Uh, it's uh, a localization, uh, bilateral localization of the tumor of uh, unbenign uh, factor metastasis. Uh, the patients, and there were patients on adjuvant chemotherapy as well. And so we tried to figure out the response of patients to different treatment. Interesting graphs. If it's isolated lesion of peritoneum, it's much better than it's a combination of lung and peritoneum lesions. According to prognostic data on efficacy of conventional chemotherapy, actually, uh, is better than if there are lesions in lung and peritoneum. And same concerns, the median uh, life uh, expectancy for those patients. Uh, actually, if we look at those factors, uh, peritoneal lesions uh, and uh, median life expectancy and effect of uh, FDG, actually, it's at the level of 1 or 2 percent of patients. Same goes for target therapy. If we take older studies, which included small number of patients, and we did study localization and impact of primary uh, localization of uh, tumor to target regimen of treatment uh, uh, in such a colorectal uh, uh, cancer is colorectal We could explain it because right side uh, tumors, which oftentimes are the reasons of isolated lesions of peritoneum, they do not respond to this therapy, even if they don't have mutations. We can see the volumes of chemotherapy in Mob, uh, in right uh, side uh, localization, Xumab would be good right uh, hand uh, localization. Uh, so if it's right uh, side which involved, it, it should be Bucetumab. Uh, and what regimen of chemotherapy should be there? We have got a tribe study comparing the results of more aggressive uh, treatment and conventional treatment. Three components scheme uh, increases the uh, frequency of facts and life expectancy, but it's toxic. We analyze the work, which shows that re regimen is only efficient when look, uh, there is a right-hand side localization of the tumor, then we'll gain in survival. If it's left-hand side, it's the same efficacy as for filfoxerin. We can come to a conclusion to that the optimum regimen for chemotherapy and target therapy for such type of carcinoma with the lesion of the right hand side of the rectum, it's better to start uh, with trepuzumab. In our chemotherapy unit, how frequently we deal with peritoneal lesion. More than 400 patients were treated, and 69%, which is 16%, had uh, 
uh, retroperitoneal metastasis and some had isolated lesions in peritoneum. That uh, correlates with European and American studies. But as to survival rates, uh, if peritoneum is involved, peritoneum is involved, or some other organs, it's the worst survival. If it's only peritoneum, which is uh, lesioned, actually survival, which is slightly uh, better. Uh, 71 months, the median life expectancy. Very good prognosis vis-a-vis -vis the total population due to the fact that in four patients, four patients out of 10 uh, had the operation. And as to peritoneal, um, inter interperitoneal um, uh, chemotherapy was done, and actually the surgeries to remove metastasis in peritoneum are good. But as to the gut, uh, uh, the less peritoneal carcinoma this is the more efficient is peritoneal uh, to me, and uh, it's the higher frequency of those resections and uh, meta-analysis, sub-analysis of meta-analysis shows the less the lesion, uh, the higher uh, the likelihood of repeated resections actions and we uh say that it's between 6 to 12 uh, uh, indices uh, for this. As to the large intestine, it's slightly different, and we assess uh, the f chances for complete seat reduction, the bulking, so it's a longer survival curve. So optimum uh, indicator uh, indication for that actually is if uh, the index is between 16 to uh, 24 debulking, uh, it's high PCI metastasis in liver and radical surgery uh, that is based on retrospective study, retrospective database, uh, uh, small studies of large American, Russian, and European clinics, uh, surgery, high-tech technologies, and debulking. The availability, we understand that that is evidence-based patient. We select the patients with uh, lower lesion in the peritoneum. These are specialized centers and they get system therapy, so the patients live longer. So we're looking for prospective studies. One study was reported one uh, uh, one year ago as to chemotherapy. That is a wonderful design. It is quite simple. There were question what a drug would be used. Oxaliplatin was used and phtorolacil and in Patients were randomized for site reduction with Cypac or for that a reduction and uh, inclusion criteria, uh, at, least, at least six months of follow-up the uh, disease uh, using presidium chemotherapy. So there was a selected group of patients who had surgery, and the diagram survival, relapse survival, total survival, no difference, uh, but the indicators of the median of total survival is 41 months in both groups after removal without any hyperk of metastasis in the peritoneum. The same as in case of metastasis, in case of colon cancer, and much better when we speak about system therapy, when in case of left-hand localization, ideally it would be at the level of 34 months. These are striking data which show that we can remove metastasis from the peritoneum if you follow up the disease. But as to the heating, probably it should be heated or drugs should not be administered. Why it is important to use chemotherapy prior to removal of metastasis from peritoneum? We know from the treatment of colon metastasis in liver, there are data on treatment metastasis in peritoneum. If the efficacy of chemotherapy results in uh, pronounced metamorphosis, you have very high indication, uh, indicators of high uh, 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 activity of uh, 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 the metamorphosis or the independent prognostic factor that determines improvement of the indicators of total survival based of multifactorial nail Analysis, but those who love HIPOC uh, didn't surrender. They uh, waited for other studies. What happens if there is total uh, for the, uh, site reduction? Probably HIPOC will be efficient. We uh, watched it, uh, waited for the results of HIPOC with the second uh, complicated uh, disease. Uh, we have metastasis in Berry. If we have a, a T4 low uh, differentiation, such patients were selected uh, for 
for a randomized study of the third phase, the same French authors. You can see that after they made surgery in case of complicated uh, uh, colon uh, cancer, uh, th there was adjuvant therapy, classical therapy of the third grade, or HAPIC, and then adjuvant chemotherapy. And the authors want uh, to see the frequency of metastasis in periton 18 months after surgical treatment, and they had to include 176 patients to reduce the indicator using HIPEC from 25 to 10 percent. So what appeared, uh, no difference in uh, emergence of metastasis and peritoneum when HIPEC was used or just with adjuvant chemotherapy was recorded. With complete cytoreduction, reduction, there is no prevention. So the peritoneum is clear. No HIPEC worked. So if uh, I'm speaking about the survival rate, if uh, we uh, don't have to heat uh, in case of uh, colon cancer, that would not be normal. As to uh, probably, uh, these are the Frenchmen, uh, they use axaliplatin, there are methylatine, you can add anything into peritone. I found a paper where they compared uh, colon cancer, HIPEC, group with melphalan, group with metamacine C. No difference in terms of total survival, but medians of life expectancy, 36 months, less than 41 months, that was in the French study, where HIPEC was not used. So whatever regime you use, no effect would be on the survival rate of the patients. I found another study where they tried together was Entropaltine to add Rintekan to the patients, no effect on total survival rate. Thus, the regimen doesn't play any role for the colon cancer because HIPEC doesn't work here, but that is a circle of anonymous alcoholics. They come together and think of what should we do if one method is low efficient or non-efficient. We, uh, uh, we take it as a standard of treatment. I found a paper in 2019. The Netherlands organized a study of the third phase of comparison, and the control group was HIPEC versus HIPEC with pre-surgical uh, hemotherapy after surgery reduction with isolated lesion of the peritoneum of, in case of colon cancer. HIPEC is not needed. Probably will remove heating and uh, introduce intraperitoneal chemotherapy. In case of stomach cancer, preliminary data showed that we can use intraperitoneal chemotherapy against systematic treatment that will improve survival rate, particularly in case of minimum lesion of the peritoneum. And it, uh, no ascites would be desirable, although its frequency is low. There is a study of the third phase, and Japanese checked whether uh, we, instead of uh, system therapy, should add interperitoneal uh, chemotherapy uh, versus systematic treatment. Uh, they didn't have any effect on survival, uh, so the frequency of ascites uh, decreased. But we use tispolatine in ascites for systematic purpose, so for no accumulation that doesn't affect the survival rate of the patient but improves the quality of their life. The same in case of ovarian cancer. There were a lot of old work showed that interperitoneal chemotherapy improves survival. If we open NCCN, that is one of the lines of the first line of therapy. However, new studies show that interperitoneal uh, chemotherapy doesn't improve the uh, survival. Uh, irrespective of site reduction, whether it is uh, total or non-total. Uh, similar uh, diagrams two months ago, renewed data were given on total survival. Interperitoneal uh, chemotherapy doesn't work in ovarian cancer. As to the intestines, they decided to, under high pressure to spray the peritoneum pipec method, the high content of hydrogen uh, CO2, and uh, we uh, can use acceleration these are just preliminary data that this is efficient in terms of reducing the symptoms of the lesion of the peritoneum. As to data on survival rate, they are not available. I know there, uh, no, the results of HIPEC and peritoneal chemotherapy, we can see that we should always wait for endonized studies of the third phase, and we shouldn't believe the surgeons who state that we have uh, treated 70 patients. Let us uh, uh, translate them to the whole country. If the patient with colorectal uh, PEC and so with isolated metastasis in peritone comes to use that active chemotherapy 
uh, if uh, it is a false vaccine with blood of mob and you get stabilization, you go to the surgeon, you remove all the shows of the disease because the golden hands of the surgeon should remove everything. Then we continue adjuvant therapy and the patients will live long. Thank you for your attention.